Hey guys, it is twin number two, but first in your heart. And I know a lot of you aren't going to be able to make it to Cookie Con, but that shouldn't mean you miss out on the Cookie Con content. Say that five times fast because it was difficult to say it once. But I actually want to show you today what we are going to be speaking on at Cookie Con so that you can have that information and you can save a plane ticket to Florida and everything like that. Um, so this is actually our Cookie Con script that we're going over today. I'm going to amend it a little bit because uh, we're not actually at Cookie Con, so all the Cookie Con jargon we don't need to go through. But I just want to cover a few basics because Heather said you would guys would find it valuable to go through the staging part, to go what through my mindset goes when I set up a photo and everything like that. So I want to cover that with you today. If you see me looking at the computer screen, I'm referencing my notes um, because I wrote this script today. So this is also practice for me. So they, thank you for being here for it. Um, but I'll reference the computer screen a few times just to make sure that I'm on track and I don't miss anything. Um, I have a complete intro written out, but you already know who we are. So I'm going to save you the pain and the ear torture by going through it, by just jumping on into what we are actually going to stage today. Heather, can I have you go get those cookies for me? Sure. All right, guys. So we are coming to the end of school. I just did my back to school sales. And that means the next big holiday is you guessed it, it's Halloween. So I said, what better way to get people hyped up for the holiday than to stage some Halloween cookies for you? I'll be honest, I did not want to make Halloween cookies this week. I have so many orders, but Heather said, please do it. It's hard to say no to her, so I baked up some cookies that we will be staging together today. Before we jump into staging, there's a few things we have to do beforehand, and that is thinking of our scene. Photography is taking pictures. Good photography is invoking an emotion with those pictures. And that's always what we want. Thank you. Heather slid it under the camera trying to avoid it. <laughs> it was like a ninja move, um, but I appreciate it. Thank you. When it comes to photography, we always want to create a feel and create a vibe. What does that even mean? I feel like a teenager using the word vibe, but it really is the truest word for what we are doing here. Creating a vibe and a feeling creates an emotion in your audience. And that emotion is what we want to create because it usually results in them pulling their wallet out and handing you some money. Can you just put a photo, can you just put a cookie on a backdrop and take a photo? You absolutely can, but it doesn't create that same emotional connection for your audience. We want to get a, a sense of value with our photography. We want to create a sense of feeling with our photography because when we can combine those, it usually results in sales. And that is our ultimate goal. Um, our goal today is to sell these Halloween cookies. Um, our target is by October 20th. And that is going to always be what we reference back when we're staging, when we're thinking of concepts, when we're editing our photos all the way to the copy at the very end. Can we sell these cookies by October 20th? So before we start, I'm just going to go down here on the other screen here. Okay. When it comes to vibes, what is a vibe that you feel when it comes to Halloween? I know what I feel. I get excitement when, I, when the sun starts going down and kids start getting super excited. Sorry, my phone went off. Heather's annoyed with me. <laughs> um, I feel a, an excitement when it comes. Um, some words that me and Heather put together are spooky, dark, haunted, candy, fun, creepy crawlies, and things like that. Um, with those things in mind, those are the vibes that we are going to write, try to recreate with our photo today. Um, I'm going to actually call on Heather because she's my, my audience. Okay, Heather, we have a vibe. Now, what colors would you suggest when it comes to building a Halloween staged photo? I think greens, purples, blacks, um, maybe spiderweb whites, uh, pink corn, yellowish orange. Did you notice that didn't, she did not say words like baby blue, the rainbow. That's because those colors don't create the vibe that we're going for. So when you are mixing your icing colors, when you are decorating those cookies, that's when I start to think about how am I going to stage this photo? What are the colors I'm using? What is the vibe I'm trying to create? And what is that feeling I'm trying to evoke? So we're going to stay away from baby blue because baby blue probably will work against us. Um, so we don't want to bring that in there because it will not work for us. What the colors that Heather mentioned where she said um, blacks, uh, maybe some contrasting whites like spiderweb, ghosts, things like that, 
oranges, yellows of the candy corn, dark purple, greens for the goblins. Those are the kind of colors we want to incorporate in our scene today. Um, so great job on Heather. I appreciate you doing that. Yeah. <laughs> you did great. So our next thing, and this is probably uh, the most valuable part here because Heather says, Corey, you always talk about props, but you never talk about the props we shouldn't use. You always are just using the ones you know you should use but explain what we should grab and what we shouldn't grab. Heather said, do you have bad props? I don't even know what that means, but I said, no, not really, because I stay away from those. So she forced me to go to the store to load up on some bad props so I could show them to you today. So that's what we're gonna go over. Um, and these are ones I'm going to use for all my Halloween sets. Um, so I just wanna show you the pros and the cons to each set of props that we could use for Halloween. Our first and our foremost, we have these two bowls. This guy was so cute. He was on the shelf and he was looking at me like this and I said, I think I need him in my life. He is adorable. But when I brought him down, what I saw was um, exactly what my end user would see. When we take flat lay photos, that means we're taking photos from here down below. It's laying flat. Um, so we'll guess what my clients would see if this was in the photo. They'd see a big spot of orange, reflecting, huge, eye-catching, but guess what, I don't sell bowls. Um, so this guy would actually work against me if I used him. So while he is cute, while he will hold my candy corn in my house, he will not be making our photo cut. Today, or for Halloween, but he is very cute. We have this little black, what would you call it, colander? Huh? Cauldron. Cauldron, is colander a word? That's like what you use for cooking. Okay, we'll call it cauldron. Um, so this little, Thing is small which is great because guess what my cookies are relatively smaller they're about three and a half to four inches typically um, this would dwarf my cookies this would enhance the size of my cookies because it's a lot smaller it gives a good perspective look at what my clients would see if they saw this in a flat lay photo this is great it is black it's not going to steal attention away it's also matte so it's not going to reflect light back into my camera lens that I have to try to edit out which is so frustrating and very hard to do I can put uh, sprinkles in here. I could put purple, dark purple shred in here, and it could actually build my photo versus taking away from it. So check mark for this guy. This guy, not so much. Our next guy, I like him. He's on my table. We have these two spiders. I ran to the store. They still have their tags on it. Um, but I want to say, what spider do you think would make a better photo prop? this black guy that would blend in, not take a ton of attention away, or this uniquely colored guy that our eyes couldn't stay away from. If you guess this guy, you are correct. This poor spider does not make our prop cut today. But between this spider, who is ginormous, the size of my face, how am I gonna fit this in a photo? And how is it going to enhance my cookie? Is this gonna make it my cookies look smaller? That's not good, that's not adding value. Um, or could we use this little guy? This little guy does the same thing this big guy does, but he doesn't take away from my cookies. Imagine trying to fit this into a scene with my cookies. A lot of my photo would be wasted on this guy and I do not sell this guy. Imagine using this, does the same purpose, creates the same feel and vibe, but doesn't take up so much space. So big guy, you do not make the cut. Little tiny spider dude, you make the cut. All right, our next guy, we got some tea towels. All right, guys, Heather did say some great colors when she talked about tea towels. She said greens, yellows, whites. Guess what? This tea towel has all of it and more. But what do you see when you see this tea towel? I think spring, Easter. It's, it's, it you know, has the right elements, but it's just the wrong delivery. This is what I used for my Easter sets to stage. So this is not creating that feel and vibe we are going for when it comes to Halloween. So you pretty little tea towel. You do not make the cut today, but this guy, all black, makes the cut. You could use black or white depending on what your backdrop is because it really does frame your scene. And we're going to actually use a black one today to do just that, frame our scene. So black tea towel, you're in. Easter tea towel, you're out. All right, we are at eyeballs. <laughs> you move your hair back Sorry, Heather said my hair is too pretty. Okay guys, we have three sets of eyeballs to use today. 
And I want to show you, these are common eyeballs. You can find them in any craft store. The problem with these eyeballs is they are made of plastic and guess what? They are reflective. If it's reflecting to you and your eyes, guess what it's doing? It's reflecting back into your camera screen. Case in point, I had made a cookie and it had not dried yet. And I took a photo, packed up the cookie, it was ready to go. And I look at the photo and guess what I can see in the reflection of the eyes of this cookie. I could see my big ginormous head in there. So I had to send it to Heather to edit it out. That's what we don't wanna do. If we can set our photo up success at the beginning, we have less work to do when it comes to editing. So these eyeballs, while they are good and you could still use them, they would take a lot of angles to make it not reflect back into your, into your camera lens and take um, the distracting away from your cookies for these guys. Um, these are those little candy eyeballs. They are matte, so you could use them. They have the same effect as the other eyeballs, uh, but they will not cause that reflection. So if you can, use these candy ones that are matte. I also found these um, bouncy ball eyeballs, um, and it came in a few colors. So we have blue, we have this kind of orangey. I'm probably not gonna use the orange guy, and here's why. This is a very bright color, and you know I don't want my props to take away from my cookies. I want them to enhance my photo. So this bright guy probably won't make the cut. This blue guy, definitely, it's matte, it's rubber. It's not gonna do anything against my photo. It's going to add to it. So eyeballs go with matte eyeballs. Okay, we have candy is next. Here is a candy, what would you call A lollipop. Okay, this lollipop is great. Unfortunately, with this lollipop in the wrapper, there is these words there. When you have words in your photo, people can't help but try to read it. Uh, we don't sell candies. We don't, we actually sell cookies with words on it, not candies with words on it. So we would want to avoid this. Here's the thing. You can say, Corey, you can take it out of the wrapper. Look at how bright these colors are. Our eyes could not help but just go straight to here when they see the photo. And that is working against us because we don't make candy. We make cookies, bakes, whatever you're selling. If it's not a lollipop, we don't want it to work against us. Um, I could not find it at the store, but I swear I checked three different stores. But a good candy that you could use that would add to the aesthetics of your photo is candy corn. It's very muted in color and it's very recognizable. Um, we'd all know what you're talking about. We'd all know it's fall. We'd all know Halloween if we saw candy corn. So if you want to use candies, that would be a great one to use that would add to your photo. Next. We got sprinkles. Heather, what do these sprinkles make you think of? Fourth of July. Okay, these are Fourth of July sprinkles, so we probably wouldn't use them in our Halloween set, even if they're cute, because it takes away and distracts from our main goal, the Halloween feel and vibe. These sprinkles I have are all Halloween colors and they're pretty muted. They could go in my um, black cauldron and they could add to my photo. So definitely look at the colors you're using and make sure they're adding to, not taking away. Um, so sorry, 4th of July sprinkles, you do not make the cut today. Okay, you know, it wouldn't be me if I wasn't talking about beads. We have beads and we have this garland. This garland screams Halloween, but unfortunately it also screams reflection in bright colors. Um, these purple things are little bats on there and we're actually staging bat cookies, um, but these little bats are reflective. They would actually take your attention away if the sun hit it ever so right. Um, so we'd probably stay away from this one. If you could find a more matte version of this, that could work, um, but we're probably not going to go with this guy just because of the reflection. We have these beads though. These ends, they do not fit my vibe, but I can crop those out and these black beads do the same thing that garland would do. They're black, they wouldn't take away from my photo, they would actually enhance it. They'd be like a buffer in my photo, so I can use these beads, um, but I'd probably stay away from the garland. So garland, you do not make the cut. Beads, you always have the key to my heart. Okay, things with words. I couldn't find a thing I liked with words because I do not use words. This screams Halloween, there's a ghost on it, it says the word spooky, but here's the thing, when there's words in a photo, we cannot help but read it. Uh, I don't want to use words in my photos, I do not sell these wooden signs, so I try to stay away from that. You'll see it a lot at Valentine's Day or Thanksgiving with things that say blessed and thankful. Uh, our eyes go there first, um, but you know people have uh, mindsets and they have attention of gnats, 
So why would we wanna waste any of our time having people read when we could have them buy? So I do strictly try to stay away from words and phrases in my photos so people can focus in the words and phrases that are on the cookies I'm selling, not my props that ha happen to have the words on them. Now we have florals. I didn't have a floor, like an actual flower arrangement with me, I left it at home, but florals are great for filling in dead space, but it depends which one you're used. I probably wouldn't use um, pink flowers in my Halloween scene uh, because those colors do not match. They would take attention away from what we're doing. They'd catch the eye. That's not what I'm trying to catch the eye with. Um, things like this, what does that say? That definitely says Halloween, um, and it creates a feel and vibe that we're going for it without even saying a word. Uh, so watch the foliage and the florals and the greenery that you use because it does a lot to set your scene. Then we have these buckets. I'm not actually gonna use them today, but I just wanted to show you because I see a lot of people liking these buckets. If I was selling something in this bucket, I'd want it to be in my photo. If this was just a prop and I'm not selling it, I wouldn't want it because look at what people see with flat lay. Uh, they don't see the cute purple anything on it. Um, also, I could have it laying on the side and have cookies coming out of it, but there is words on here. It is very kind of distracting, so I probably wouldn't want to use this in my photo because the eyes would pick up on it. This guy, all black, all black inside, would almost be muted and your eyes wouldn't even notice it if it was just being a prop. So I could have cookies spilling out of it and you would really just focus on the cookies. You wouldn't focus on this. This would be a prop that would be enhancing our cookies. So I just wanted to show you the difference because a lot of people like to use these tins, but there is a way to use it depending on if you're trying to sell it or if you're trying to use it as a prop. Um, so that wraps us up on the do's and don'ts of our props. So I'm actually going to go ahead and we are going to try to set the scene. I wanted to show you this backdrop. This is the one from AE Core and it's a matte black. Matte being the keyword. Um, no matter what backdrop you purchase, the one thing I want you to look for is, is it matte? Um, when your surface reflects light a lot, it is so distracting and almost impossible to edit out without the use of Photoshop. And even then it has its limits. When you can have your scene set for success, you have to do less later on. It makes your life so much easier. So when you're looking for a backdrop, look for something that's matte and non reflective because if it's reflecting in your eyes guess what it's going to do in your camera lens it is going to reflect back in there so i'm going to break this scene right now and i'm going to wipe off this table and we're going to start setting our scene okay guys i have the camera situated downward so you can actually see what we're working with here's our 23 by 23 inch ae core matte black backdrop. That is a lot to say, but I want to, if you wanted to recreate this, I want you to have the tools that I'm using. Um, it's a great backdrop. It's rigid. So I could actually turn this if I needed to. That is why I buy rigid backdrops because as the sun's turning, as I need to turn my cookies towards the sun to get that perfect photo, or I need to turn it back. I can with this versus with a roll up backdrop, you'd actually have to uh, roll it up, take everything off and put it there. I don't have that kind of time. So I really do enjoy rigid backdrops. Um, so here we have this, I actually have this set out already and you can see that we have a X pattern and that's the reason because this is our focal point here. This is where I want eyes to go. So we are creating that with this X shape. You say, Corey, that's a lot going on. You're right, what can we focus on? And here is how we are going to actually do this with this focus. We are going to use one of our props that we talked about earlier and that is just this tea towel. So now what are your eyes drawn to in this? We are have it layered and we have it framed here. So your eyes are drawn to this area and that's what I want because that's where our cookies will be staged on. Um, so this kind of sets the scene. Layering is fantastic in photography because it really creates that vibe you're going for. It breaks up the photo in the monotony of this large black backdrop and it gives your eyes visual interest. Um, so we don't sell this netting. You can buy it at any Halloween store when it comes around. I don't sell the tea towel, but all these things combined is going to help set the stage. Um, so I have these palettes. They were at the, um, at the $5 section at Target a few years back. So I don't have them, but I think you can find them, you know, on different sites. But these palettes are very handy um, in my photography. I really do like them um, because they create height. When we have height, we can create blur. And that blur is so pretty in photos and really 
makes the eyes focus where I want them to go. So if I can use height, that is helpful. I'm also using this bright white. I have a brown one, I have like a medium brown one, and I have this white one. Why am I using white, Corey? Because guess where your eyes cannot help but look. You are right here because we have such contrast. We have dark, dark gray, dark white. Your eyes can't help but go here. That's what I want. This is will be the stage my cookies are set on. So that is why I want to use white here versus something dark because we want to guide the eyes. Um, contrast can do that for you. It is very fun to play with contrast. I love it um, because it's an easy hack that you can do to really bring someone's eyes to focus where you want them to go. So I wanna bring in our extra little props here. We were talking about foliage um, and we have these, not necessarily foliage, but they, Look at them, it's like tiny little fingers pointing where I want them to go. So I'm actually gonna stage these right ever so nicely right here. And then I have one more guy that I'm gonna bring in. I'm gonna stage them right here. Guess where that middle part is gonna go? If you guessed it, you're right. This is where we are going to stage our photo. So these little things are helping guide the eyes. If your eyes went here, it would come back here. If your eyes went here, it would come back here. And this is where our cookies are gonna be. This creates a good vibe that we're wanting to go for. These are pretty inexpensive, um, but it has color, gives us a little pop and directs people back where we need them to go. And it also fills in dead space. So I'm all about that filling in the dead space. We have these right here. These are not my colors, so I don't want them to be there. They would be distracting. So I'm actually gonna just bring them like this and they're gonna hang off. We're actually gonna crop this photo together, um, but I just wanna see how we can take up some dead space. So say if I didn't want my eyes to stay here, just having this here would help make your eyes eliminate it. You're like, Corey, but there's something there. Your eyes would actually not even notice it. Um, and so since we're gonna be working with our blacks and our shadows, you're not even gonna see that it's there, but it's going to take up this dead space. So you're not gonna just linger with this white part right here. Now, let me find out what else I'm going to do. We have these eyeballs. As you know, I said I was gonna go with the darker eyeballs, um, but my bats have ginormous eyes, so we are actually going to use that in our favor here. We're gonna just put these eyeballs around here to fill in dead space. Will some of the eyeballs not make it into the photo? Yes, do I care or no? I don't sell eyeballs, so I'm fine with it. Um, but I'll have them there in case it does make it into my photo, so I don't have to worry about it. Okay, we have these spiders. Told you the spiders are great. Um, they definitely build a scene, so I'm just gonna put them around here. Not too much, and some of them won't make it. That's totally okay. I'm not worried about it. I just want them there in case. And now let's set the stage for our cookies here. These are freshly baked. Thank you, Heather. Um, so we're gonna actually, I actually have about a dozen cookies, but guess how many cookies are gonna make it into the scene? It's only gonna be three and you say, Corey, but why you hard worked? You did so many, that's all your hard work. Why wouldn't you wanna show it? The reason why I don't wanna show it is because I wanna focus on the details. I have a bunch of bats, so they're actually a repetitive pattern. So I don't need to fit them all into my scene to make it work. There we go. So here we go right here. This cookie right here is my money maker. Uh, I charge a lot for lettering because I hate it, but I also love selling it because I make more money. Um, and these two actually help enhance my photo. I have a red bat, but with this photo, because I have purple and green here, this is what I want to make work together. Um, so I have, this will be the photo that we edit. I already took the photo because I had natural light this morning, um, but here's what our base is, is gonna be. You see that this camera is collecting a wide angle right here, cropping is going to help us frame our scene. But Corey, you took so much time to set this, that's okay. I only care about selling cookies, so if I have to crop out my hard work with the props and staging, that's absolutely fine because I need to sell these cookies. Um, so that sets our scene for this. That was no time at all, I talked most of it, um, but it gives you kind of a concept of what we're going for. This white, this height brings our eyes here. These point our eyes. Our eyes bounce off of this back onto the cookies. These fill in dead space. And that's how we set the scene for this Halloween set. 
If you follow the mindset, this works for if you're doing a wedding set, a baby set, anything like that, these same ideas and principles will work for those photos. You might not be using, you know, Halloween eyeballs and things like that, but there'll be other things like candles and things like that. So I hope this was helpful for you. What we're going to do now is go and edit this photo together in Lightroom. And then we are going to go over, Heather's actually going to Photoshop one of the eyeballs out. Uh, to show you a easy Photoshop 101 intro. I told her not to make it complicated because we don't have time to learn new things today. And she, <laughs> she said, I'll make it complicated. Just kidding. And then we're going to go over copy um, and then how to post it in Creator Studio and hopefully make them sales and sell out for our Halloween pre-sales. Heather actually said, hey, how about you show them how to stage um, using more than just three cookies. And I said, hey, absolutely fine, let's do it. Um, as you're gonna see, I'm gonna take out some of these pieces, but we can use our foundational pieces because that is okay. And what this is actually doing is giving us more runway uh, with our photography. So I can use multiple photos because you know, if I keep posting the same photo, my feed looks bland, it looks repetitive, looks like I'm not making sales, but if I can use different photos, it actually will help me sell a little bit better. All right, one of the eyeballs definitely just rolled away. <laughs> but he, I have more eyeballs. Um, but here we go. Um, here it comes at two. Huh? Here it comes at two. <laughs> You're so corny. <laughs> okay, here we go. We are setting our scene now. And this plate is going to help hold and frame our scene. Just like those wooden pallets did, this plate can do that for us, but it can hold a lot more cookies. How I'm going to arrange the cookies is a method to the madness. There's going to be a lot of cookies on this plate, but I only care about two my two money makers, the two that I need to be in focus to really make this photo work. So bear with me as I put them on here because we got a lot of cookies to stage and it is sometimes a little hard to stage with them. I'm not gonna line my purple one up here with another purple guy because I don't want to have too much purple on one side. I'm gonna come and bring in some others. I have this here and he's actually gonna play apart and holding this guy up. Bear with me here, this is always tricky to do. So you say, Corey, why are you covering up the part with words? And the reason why is because I have one more cookie with words and that's the one I want to stay in focus. Um, so that other one is actually pretending to be a prop for us. So I don't necessarily care about him as much. Let me go ahead. And here we go. I'm gonna put this in here to fill in this dead space. We have a couple more in here that I can use. And what these um, are just doing is building up my scene to give it some height and to give me some shadow. Wouldn't actually probably sell these little guys, but they are super cute. So here we go. The two cookies that I care about the most are this guy and this guy. This is my money maker because I, as you know, I said I charge a lot for writing and lettering because it takes me forever. Um, and this guy right here is going to showcase each guy in this thing. These are all covered up, but because we know what this guy looks like, our brains are smart enough to fill in what these guys look like. Now you know I told you to take up most of the newsfeed when you're taking photos. Um, if I take a photo horizontally, uh, it takes up more screen on our desktop, but less screen on our phones. And knowing that people access information from their phones, probably 99% of people access information from their phones, we wanna cater to those people. So I'm actually gonna take this photo at an angle. I'm gonna angle it so it's not, not horizontal it's actually going to be vertical so i'm going to come in this will be where my camera goes and this is the angle that i'm going to so i get that height and then i'm going to bring in my crop and then you're going to be able to focus on these two cookies i think in the photo that i took this morning this guy is going to be green but the concept is going to be the same these are my two focal cookies every other guy is just helping me sell these too. Um, so I'm going to take a horizontal photo because if I post a photo in a comment section 
horizontal takes up more of the feed. If I post a photo in a group, vertical takes up more of the feed. So there's a strategy to have both. I don't want you to just focus on one. I want you to take both and utilize both, have a theory and a strategy behind both. And that is what we are going to edit together here in Lightroom in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. Hey guys, we are in Lightroom. We are ready to edit our Halloween photos. Um, you can see right here, I have a lot of photos on this memory card. I definitely need to clear them off, but I'm not gonna clear them off right now. Um, but I have the two selected that we are going to edit together. Um, this will help us for the both scenes that we set. We're gonna edit these two photos together. You can see I take a lot more photos of that because I want to be able to have all the opportunity to edit these photos later after the cookies leave to their new home. So I take as many photos as I can. I won't use them all, but I can edit them all. I can have them in my back pocket if I need to. So we're gonna bring these two photos in to our development portion. Um, and I'm just gonna choose these photos so we can save on some time. Um, control A will highlight both of them and then we can come into our development platform and here we go. We are in here. As you know, this is more of a Halloween feel. So what I'm going to do instead of upping our highlights, shadows and whites and blacks, we're going to decrease them. Um, and this is a little bit different because we've always done more brighter and wider photos. It's, it does great with food photography. If we're trying to do a feel and a vibe, we're going to come a little bit darker. Um, so you can see my backdrop is fading away. How is that and not my cookies fading away? It's because we have a white plate. So it's taking my shadows and really decreasing them. We're going to come down and do that with the blacks. And now you can see our eyes are definitely focused where we want them to go, which is on our cookies. Um, if I wanted my cookies to have a little less shine to them, I can come down and lower my highlights. I want them to stick out just a little bit because they are bright, they are fun. So we're gonna keep that there, but I definitely need to crop this photo. Um, I want to showcase the two cookies in the front like we had talked about, so I can crop these other cookies. Corey, why are you cropping out some of the cookies on the side? That's because there are props. It's not my main squeeze here. But look when I turn, edit this photo and crop it, our eyes are right to the cookie. So if I want to come down here and I'm saying, hey, that's a little too twisted, I can actually come and rotate it just a pinch if I wanted to, but then it does edit the side of the screen. So I can come here and I can bring these sides in just over so much. And here we go here. Let me crop that just a little bit more there. And now our eyes are definitely on the star of the show. So there is an eyeball there um, that is distracting and Heather is actually going to help take that out of this photo in our next set, um, in our next video where she does Photoshop 101. I told her to make it easy, so she promised. As you know, we can copy this setting. I always like to copy it and see if I can apply it to the next photo to save me time. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Let's try. It doesn't look bad. So actually I'm gonna come and crop this. We're gonna crop it very close to where I am at the cookies here. Because, let me control Z undoes that. Sorry, I grabbed the wrong thing. And then we're going to really crop it close. Okay, my eyes are definitely on the cookies. So I see here um, some dots. You know, it's just me being extra, but I'm gonna actually erase these dots with our healing tool. So I can come here, I can highlight these, highlight these, highlight, easy breezy. This is a crumb there. Here's a little piece of, I don't sift my powdered sugar, so you can obviously see it made an appearance in his little head. So I am going to take that out and I'm gonna click enter and it's gonna save all of those fixes. So all those annoying dots that were along here are gone. Those were little nail marks. And now we're left with are almost edited beautiful photo here. If I wanted to come and add some texture, I can absolutely do that. It makes it a little bit harsher. Yeah, I can come the other way and it makes it a little bit less. Um, clarity, if you wanna see, we get a little bit harsher here. Our shadows get a little darker. I wanted to keep it bright, so I'm actually gonna keep it a little bit lighter. If I wanted to come and up my whites, I can do that and it makes my photo even brighter. And then I can lower my highlights a little bit so my cookies aren't reflecting the sunlight coming from it. And we have a good photo that I think would catch attention, catch eyes as we go. 
this little thing is annoying me. It's another little nail mark. So I'm just going to see if I can get it gone. That is not good. So I'm going to control Z. We're going to lessen the size here. I think it's going to help him. And I'm going to grab this. I'm going to help direct it where it needs to go. That looks pretty good. Let's back out fit to screen. You can't even see it there. So it's not distracting. If we were being extra, I can come and remove this. And there we go less distracting. Corey, why are you so extra in your photos? It's because I'm really trying to sell. This set is just an example, so I can really take out any imperfections that I want to, and I can really showcase my hard work versus losing someone in a weird um, crumb that accidentally made it on the photo. Like this guy. Actually, I don't like that edit. So let's come back. We're going to lessen this, and this will help us. There we go. Now I'm going to fit to screen. And there we go. He is ready to go. I'm going to send him off to Heather and she is going to actually take out these little spider legs. This was a part of our set, but now because the spider isn't a part of it, it is a little distracting. So I said, Heather, do you think you can remove this, these two little spider legs? She said, I think I can. So thank you for staying tuned for these. We're going back to library, control A, export, and I can export it into my folder and it is ready for us there. Oh, I export it into a different folder. I don't want to put them in there. Okay. All right, guys, stay tuned. And what an amazing edit Corey did there. Thank you so much, twin sister. If you can't tell by my slightly higher pitched voice, it may be more relaxed sound. I am Heather. We have switched twins and I do what I do best, which is sit behind a computer and Pet my cat, I guess. Anyway, so here is one of the photos that Corey staged awesomely. I'm going to run through very quickly some cool things Photoshop can do. Now, from this lesson, you're not going to learn how to use Photoshop. I guarantee you guys are going to look at me and be like, what in the world did you just do? I understood none of it. And that's absolutely okay. Really, what I want to show you is the possibilities. And what you could imagine if you did start to sit down and kind of learn this application, what you'd be able to do with it. Um, we do cover a lot more of this in the sugar cookie marketing paid course called the cookie college. You can go see what that is about at the cookie But for now, and be patient with me, we're going to run through this real quick and I'm going to just take out some distracting elements, which Corey sends me on her photos a lot. Like, Hey, there's a little bit of an issue here. Can you fix it? And the answer is maybe. <laughs> I can't fix her handwriting sometimes. So um, we're going to do three things to this image and I'm going to do them pretty quickly and I'm going to narrate it. If you do not understand a lick of what I'm saying, you are in the same bed with Corey because she doesn't understand much of what I say anyways. But we're going to edit out this little distracting light. And I know you're saying, well, Corey just put it there. Absolutely. This is just to demonstrate the capabilities of Photoshop, a very powerful application. Just like Lightroom really does change the way the image looks. Photoshop allows me to clean up some things. Let's say the cookies have done been sold. We just need to come and do a little minor fixes. We can do that here. And I'm going to show you a couple ways to skin that cat. I had to look to see if my cat was annoyed. Um, so right here, I'm going to take a really easy shortcut and I'm using my, uh, so my lasso tool. I'm just creating a really dirty line here. And again, uh, kind of a work smarter, not harder. We want to take the path of least resistance that involves the least amount of work. So basically in this green screen right here, Facebook is pretty smart. It says, okay, I know you don't like something here, so I'm going to determine if I can figure out what it is. And here in the preview panel, you can see, yep, it's exactly, it took exactly what I wanted to do out. I'm going to click OK, and it creates a new non-destructive layer here, which means it didn't alter the Im original image. It just created a new layer with my changes. In Photoshop, you should work non-destructively. However, do I always? No. <laughs> I will like working destructively. You know, these images are being posted to Facebook. They're not going to a magazine. So we can be a little bit sloppier, which means we can work faster. I'm going to do the same thing down here. So I'm going to do really straight here. I want to make sure I kind of stay in my whites and don't get onto that black line. Um, this is hard to tell what it was. You know, it was a spider, obviously, maybe. <laughs> and then uh, Corey cropped it in a funny way. And now it's kind of saying, mm, what are these two antennas? To me, it almost looks like the head of an ant. So we're going to make sure we select our original layer back here. Let's try, again, path of least resistance, the content aware fill tool. Now you see the content aware fill tool is saying, hey, I'm having a bit of an issue. Do you want some block here? Because that's selected. I select my deselection tool, a lot of selection there. And I'm going to say, hey, stop looking at black. I don't want black in this image. Can you take that out of your reference? 
And there you go. So he says, oh, okay, I'm so sorry. I realize now you didn't want black. Okay, I'll pull from the other remaining pixels again and okay. And I get a non-destructive layer. Now right here, this is too harsh for my liking. We can do a couple of options here. And again, I'm going to be uh, slightly sloppy here. And if you're big into Photoshop, you're probably going to roll your eyes. We're just going to erase some of this, which I know sounds absolutely insane. But uh, let's let's go back. Let me bring it. Okay. I just want to see what we're doing. So we're going to lessen the hardness here, and then I'm just going to come and clean this up. And basically in Photoshop, we just want people not to realize that we were ever here, right? And the less people notice that we made any changes, the better our changes will be. So I have a thankless job. Um, looks pretty good from out, zoomed way out. Maybe here, if I had, if I was trying to be really weird, I would be more specific here. I could, I could leave it like that. Well, let's leave that white thing here. Okay, so we've eliminated this to the left. You can see it over here. We've eliminated the spider legs to the bottom. And now Corey wanted me to do a, just a little bit more of a challenge and she wanted to remove this eyeball. Why? I don't know. This is just to show you all how this application works. And this is gonna be a little bit more advanced here because we have a lot of textures going on. So how would I best approach this? The way I would approach this is to probably duplicate this layer and flip them around. If that sounds complicated, just watch. It's a lot easier than it sounds. So I'm going to take my, again, my lasso tool, and we're just going to come down here and select this image. I'm going to press on my keyboard, a Windows computer, Control Shift N. That is creating a new layer and Control V. That's just, just copy and paste, right? So now watch. I have this, excuse me, wrong layer, paste. I have this guy on a new layer. So I just copied these little pixels down here and said, make me a new layer. And I want to put them here, so we're going to rotate and I'm just going to line these up with the angle of that. Um, what do you call it? I just want to make sure my angle is right. I don't feel like it's perfect. And again, the less that people know I was there, it, the better. That looks fine to me. Let's bring him down just a little bit. And in my eyes, that looks great. So we're done. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that would look terrible, right? It would look like I forgot what I was doing. So we need to clean up a little bit here. And again, back to the eraser tool. I'm going to widen him up a little bit and I'm just going to clean this up and what we want to do is clean this up so now you see that it's starting to blend a lot better here and that is our goal I have a little bit of a purple haze here but I'm going to deal with him in just a second now we need to get rid of our eyeball the way I do this best is again we're just going to be lazy I'm going to click here come back down here and again, my lasso tool is just saying, hey, whatever I do, I can only do in the area selected. So we're going to create a new layer. So we're not working destructively, which means uh, editing the bottom layer. And I'm gonna just color match this black, which is true black, perfect. And my paintbrush tool is going to make this a lot easier for me. Watch this. I'm just painting here. I'm a little Bob Ross in here. And that eyeball is almost gone. Okay, we got a little bit to the right here, and I'm going to show you something, and I am going to work. I'm not going to work destructively. We're, not, we're better than this. We're better than this. So I'm going to get a clone stamp tool. The clone stamp tool is my favorite tool to use to edit out my own acne, <laughs> but it's also a great tool in fixing our problems. So I'm clicking Alt on my keyboard, and I'm clicking here saying, hey, uh, Adobe Photoshop, I want you to use these pixels as a reference point, and I'm going to just have you copy and paste them. It's basically how Corey and I became twins, right? and I'm just copy and pasting those pixels over. We're almost there. This this difference right here in um, color is not even enough. It's very abrupt, right? So how can we make this even less abrupt? I'm gonna create a new layer. Again, you know me and my layers, and I'm gonna color match this purple shade. We're gonna do this too overlay and see how this looks again my paintbrush tool just ever so lightly we're going to just paint here and see if that is severe enough now let's see before and after it's not doing it for me i'll be honest let's go back to normal overlay and we have a bit too bright there so let me just drop this down and let's just move this layer around a bit okay okay not my favorite i know i, I see guys don't worry don't worry we're going to use my I'm going to use my, um, again, my lasso tool, my little favorite buddy. And I'm just going to say, hey, clean this up. I'm going to select this. I'm going to say, hey, anything within my selection, I'm going to delete. And do we like it? I still don't like it. How can we fix this to make it a little bit better? Let's make this a little bit darker. 
back to my layer. It is pretty, pretty light. And I'm just painting here again. Let's, Heather, stop being sloppy with it. Let's just see if we can smear this out a bit. Well, okay. When it doesn't work, um, just start over. Let's just go back to the way I was doing this before. And I'm going to go back to my background layer. And again, at the end of the day, we want nobody to realize that we were ever here. And when they can, I don't feel like they did my job correctly. So control shift N, new layer, V, paste on my new layer. And we're going to just flip this guy around. I'm going to bring this back up to the top. And let's see what we can do here. I don't want to resize you. Again, we're just going to have it match just a little bit. I don't want to make him go too far here. Okay, that's fine. Okay, now you guys trust the process. Trust the process. I'm going to just eliminate my shadows just a little bit here, and then we're going to come back in with my eraser tool to just clean up these edges and just have that blend back in together. So let's see. That to me is a little less jarring, just a little bit. I'm probably going to extend this a little bit farther by sloppily duplicating the layer again. And my goal is that you just don't see that I was here. Can you see that I was here? Cleaning up these harsher lines, coming down here, cleaning up these lines, going down here, cleaning up these lines. To me, a little bit of better, right? So let's do put these all in a folder. And I just want to show you our changes and how subtle those changes are. Nobody would notice that I did this. Um, but it would help in um, cleaning up this photo and keeping that um, focus here on the cookies. And that was really the goal of these edits was just to show you the capabilities, um, even going as far as like fixing minor mistakes. So we got, you know, this kind of right here. Uh, Corey has a lot going on here. Watch when I take this into, um, I can do this in multiple ways, right? I'm going to use my clone stamp tool again. We are going to work destructively now because I'm just wrapping this up. Stay with me, ladies. Stay with me, gentlemen. We're just going to come back down here, and I'm just going to fix some of this stuff. And I'm just going to smooth this out a bit. So now she has a little bit of a reflection here. It's not a bad thing, and nobody would ever notice, right? Nobody ever notices these things. But if we have the capability to get rid of it, I'm going to Alt-Tab. We're using my duplication brush, and I'm just going to smooth out this icing. Again, two little reflections here, just grabbing my attention, a little bit of light here. And now when I zoom out... I don't see that so much. In fact, let's just clean this up a little bit. And that is fine there. Yeah, just, just a little sun some. And I'm being extra. Um, same thing like here, we have some, uh, we had we had used these for practice a lot, so tiny hairs got on them because they were definitely um, used. So I'm using my clone stamp tool to just clean up some of these um, artifacts is what you'd call them. And hey, would anyone, would anyone care? No. But I just want to show you that you can take the extra ability to really just fix issues. And you know, you see people in the, if you're in the sugar cookie marketing group, you see people all the time asking me to Photoshop minor things. And it's like, yeah, I can do it because it's so much more simple than a lot of people imagine. And if you're listening to this and you say, well, I can't afford Photoshop, you can actually buy Photoshop and Lightroom as a Adobe Creative Cloud bundle for $10 a month. And even better, it can run on two machines at the same time, which means you could find a buddy and split it, which this whole entire ginormously amazing application can be yours for the low, low price of five bucks a month. Um, so I'm going to save this onto my computer, and that is going to take us through this edit. Um, here we have the before, and I'm going to show you the after right here. <clears throat> I'm going to just save it as a sloppy V2, and then give me two seconds to pull it up off here to the left. I am going to show you what the before and after looks like, which is one of my favorite things to do since no one ever knows my value in Photoshop. So let me just pull this up real quick. We've got my images. And I'm going to open this guy and let's see. So this is our before and this is our after. And you can see those subtle changes we made just there. Cleaning up those minor artifacts, cleaning up that letter to just make it look cleaner. And really, that's what it comes down to. It's just having options. And when it comes to good marketing, the more options you have, the better. I hope you guys are still with me. I'm sorry that took 13 minutes. But hey, you guys can skip through this. I know you're watching it um, as a recording. But thank you so much for spending a little time with me in Photoshop.
Okay, guys. So we have our stage. Our staging set was really nice. We took it into Lightroom, really brought out those colors. We took it into Photoshop, cleaned it up, and now we need to post it to social media. So how are we going to do that? Well, the first thing is we need to come up with our copy. And like I said, if it doesn't support the goal of the mission of the set, it's got to go, right? Um, so when it comes to writing copy, a lot of people feel kind of stuck like, hey, really like this birthday set. Hey, really cute, you know, Halloween set. Um, but with our copy, we need to always be closing. Really, I hate to quote that movie, but it is true. If you want to make the sale, we kind of have to ask for it. And the way we can do that is you by using copywriting formulas. Sounds technical isn't, but the more copywriting formulas you have in your back pocket, the more options you have when you need to sit down and actually write copy. When I say copy, it's any content, it's any text writing that um, accompanies kind of a sales post, which when we post these to social media, we're writing sales copy. Um, but one of the favorite copy workflows that Corey and I really like is the four C's of copywriting. Plus, it's really easy to remember, right? <laughs> make it clear, make it compelling, make it concise, and make it credible. Um, I just want to run through these real quick with you guys. I don't even know that in true cookie con that we'll be able to cover these. So consider this an extra little treat. I think we only get 45 minutes and I can already tell that this is taking longer. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about the four C's of copywriting. The process takes you for the through the four C's to help you aid in a formula that converts, which means make sales. Um, if we did all this work in baking the cookie, decorating, staging, and this, and we can't get the sale, well, our weak point is our copy. And it helps people better understand what we're doing. When I see a wall of text, um, I can't begin to describe to you how little I read it. Um, we need line breaks. You know, I love me some emojis. Um, and we need to make our call to action, our buy from me, really clear to people because we are fighting with a lot of information. Um, I think they said that we see over 5,000 ads a day between the TV, your phone, driving around and things like that. It's, it's exponential the amount of data our brains are processing consciously or subconsciously. So you and I as business owners have to kind of cut through that. And the way we're going to do that is compelling copy matched with really nice media like we just created um, together. So let's make it clear. Our copy has to be understood by everyone. You can make copy clearer by using smaller words, shorter sentences, headers, and bulleted points. You know, I love me an unordered list. <laughs> Let people be able to see quickly. Uh, when I see a, a text with a list in it, I will always read the list first. So keep that in mind. But true clarity starts with understanding your audience and your goals. Who are you talking to? I'm talking to people like cookies. No, no, no. Who is this individual on the other side of your screen? Is it a mom? Is she in her late 30s? Does she have three kids? Is, are these kids homeschooled? Do these kids go to public school, private school? Do these kids hang out with people in their neighborhood? Are these kids crazy? Are these kids like real quiet? Who is this person that you're talking to? Don't just shotgun and say, everybody, everybody wants cookies. No, we're talking to one person on the other side of that screen. And this copy has to speak directly to their heart and soul. So when we write copy, I like to imagine a single person I'm talking to. And if that person is my mom, because that's the type of content or the object I'm selling, if that person is my grandmother, I think of that person sitting in front of me and I say, how would this best come across to my mom named Larice or my grandma who I call Gams, right? That is who you're talking to. You're not talking to a computer. You're, you're talking to somebody who is very interested in what you have to offer. And we need to tell them how they can get it. Make it compelling. Copy must also be interesting enough for your audience to actually read. The key, focusing on the reader and their needs, their problems, and their desires. So when we think about this mom of three who's in maybe exactly 38, um, she's desperate to keep her kids entertained for Halloween because she doesn't know what is around the bend. Can kids go trick-or-treating this year? I don't know. It's always changing, right? So she's preparing for the worst and that these kids will be home, but she doesn't want Halloween to just be forgotten. She wants them to still have a good time. Um, her problem is keeping these kids entertained and her desire is to make them have a really fun night, right? Um, I end up writing this copy for a DIY kit that we would include in this set. So that is what we're going to pivot to here in just in a second when I write the copy out for you guys. But just stay tuned. That's what we're doing is this set with a DIY kit is how it is supposed to be sold. Make it concise. 
I'm wordy, obviously. Listen to me go. I cannot stop. But make it concise. This is conveying information in the fewest possible words. What can we eliminate to keep the copy short enough for people to make it to the last sentence, that bullet point, or the call to action? Oftentimes, I'll write something out that I'll really like, and then I'll go back through and say, hmm, can I say this with fewer words? Hmm, is there a better word for this that could take up this entire sentence? We get a lot of truncation on Facebook, which means you have to click that see more button. If it's not above the see more button, have we already lost them? What is my first line going to be? And we'll cover that in just a second when the next slide comes up. And my last one is make it credible. We talk about this in the slide as well, but I want to always say like everyone loves these. Hey, we sold out so fast last year. I only may, I only have 10 left and they go quickly. That is credibility that other people like what you're selling, right? Um, so we definitely want to make it credible. I'm going to bring you back in just a second and we're going to go through the slide together, but thank you for sticking along here. I really like the four C's of copywriting. If you can just screenshot this image and save it somewhere in your files and just keep it as a reference point to writing great copy that you don't have to always think and struggle through each time. Just, hey, create these formulas, drop in A plus B equals C, right? Um, and that is really helpful. Okay, just give me a second and we'll finish this up. Okay, home stretch here, guys. We're going to check out this copy that I've written and then we're going to post it to social media using Facebook's free creator studio platform. But first the copy. Now this is based off of the four C's and understanding that Facebook has truncation, which means it cuts off your first line and then you have to click see more, which is why I do love me some emojis on Facebook. And if you don't, you don't have to use them. It just gets a lot of people's eyes. And I noticed when I post when the performance is that I did use an emoji and when I didn't. Um, it's so shocking because people even put in the comments like, wow, no emojis. <laughs> so here we have our finished copy. I'm just going to read it through you. We're going to leave you on the slide. We have a pumpkin jack-o'-lantern emoji, which screams holiday, Halloween, right? It always, it already set the stage before I did anything. Scary good Halloween idea. Build your own edible haunted house. And that was a DIY kit. I think Sam's Cookie University might be designing. I saw somebody else designing. Corey and I thought it would be a great idea for this year because haunted houses are cool and DIY kits are cool. And let's marry those together because it would help us sell better. It's a unique idea. It's the first time I've ever seen it. Maybe I'm living under a rock. Mm, scary good all caps gets my attention my that emoji on facebook is a bright orange and then i mentioned halloween so i already say hey listen here's what's happening and build your own so you know it's an activity edible haunted house then i have a little haunted house there that was an emoji i found on facebook and then i got my call to action my first thing if they click see more they're going to see pre-order here and i'm going to have them link to a job form or a google form um, again, I teach you in the course how to set those up. I really like forms and keeping things from, you know, I want to stop things ending up in Messenger. It's really hard to follow um, the storyline in Messenger. You got back and forth. It's pretty confusing. It's not my favorite. But if we can get everyone to our order form, we can consolidate and alleviate that back and forth and loss and, you know, translation type deal. Okay. So I have my pre-order link. Those are two spider web emojis. They are also available on Facebook. It says, don't let these ghostly good DIY kits disappear right before your eyes. I have a Casper emoji, this frightening good time. This is a frightening good time to have with your little ghouls and goblins is Halloween, but hurry. These bewitching treats won't last long on the spookiest night of the year. Got a little bit of FOMO there. I already said it's going to be a good time, but if you don't hurry, you know, back with my uh, what do we talk about? Credibility. Everyone likes what I sell. They'll be gone. Then I bring it back again in my bulleted list, right? Again, people are looking at bulleted lists, so we need to have things and line breaks. We do not want just a wall of text to spook your own haunted mansion. Follow these bone chilling steps. Click on my order form here. Again, a second call to action. I've put my order form in here twice. You're not going to miss it, but I need you to click it. That's how you're going to be able to buy this from me. So we always want to constantly direct people back to my point of sale, which in this case is a job form is what it'll be. Select the number of scary haunted houses you'd like to take to your haunted house, which means you can buy more than one. Submit payment and pickup is October 30th at 12 to three. Again, back with my boundaries. I want them to be explicit. 
When the form is submitted, they will get an automatic email reminder. Then we'll send out an email sequence leading up to this. And then Corey and I have implemented a text message sequence as well, which means, yes, the form does require their phone numbers. Uh, don't be super superstitious. We're only brewing up 10 of these in our haunted cauldrons. Order ASAP or Casper takes it with them. Now, here's the thing. Heather, only 10? Only 10 right now. If 10 are sold, then I can make a decision if I want to do 10 more. But when I limit the availability of options, people tend to make more purchase. I mean, if you're watching this, you're involved with CookieCon um, or you want to be involved with CookieCon. CookieCon is fascinating because it sells out so quickly because everyone knows it sells out so quickly. You see how they did that there? I think CookieCon is just genius. Um, I really like how they do their marketing. And if we learn anything about CookieCon, it is FOMO. They tell you how many uh, tickets they have. They let you know that they always get sold out. It makes you think, hey, if I don't get this, I'm going to be left out too. And nobody wants to be left out in the cold, right? It's just not the human nature in us. So here's the copy I've made right now. Next up, I'm going to take you to Creator Studio. I promise you I won't take up too much of your time. I kept this one under five minutes. Give me just a couple more minutes and we'll wrap this up. And now this extra feature, we actually wanted to cover this in Cookie Con, but we didn't have enough time, so you guys get to enjoy it here. And that's using Creator Studio. I like pub I like scheduling softwares, and there's many. I tend to use a software called Hootsuite and Meet Edgar, but Facebook has since made Creator Studio a little bit more robust, and it is a lot more free. Um, so we're going to uh, go through it together. I'm on Corey's business page, The Crumbed Cookies, and we're going to go to Create Post in Creator Studio. You see the option to create posts down here, but that is not what we want to do because we can't schedule in Create Post for Facebook. We need to go to Creator Studio. Now, we do uh, manage a couple clients for work, so you may see them around here. I'm going to click Add Photo, and then I'm going to go back to, forgive me why I do this, I know that this is the events. I'm going to have it in Meetup, and then I have it in Images. And we have our edited image here. I'm going to click right there while he's uploading. I just want to take you through the options here. We have our post text and link, which you can see right here. Now, what I'm going to do, because that is the DIY kit we talked about earlier, and I don't have a picture of that just yet, um, I'm just going to run through here and say, you know, test text. Don't let me forget to delete this. That will be hilarious. Um, but I want to just show you how to schedule this. Now, this is pretty interesting. Uh, you don't really necessarily need to worry about these. We're not we're not as big as that right now. Um, and all this stuff is very interesting. You, know, you can add the feeling at um, call. And then you can do get messages. Again, I don't want to get messages. I want people to click on my job form. So this will not be things that I am going to worry about. I have my one image here, which is how I prefer. But right here is the important part. And I'm going to click schedule post. And here is where the magic happens. Now you can see that we are in August. It is August 31st. CookieCon will be leaving Wednesday. Oh, yeah, I forgot. It's after midnight. I'm sorry, guys. I'm up very late. My grandma needed to go to the doctor really late tonight. Um, so let's say I would start making this post around uh, October. You know, that's when people's mindset is a little bit more into this. So let's say October 1st. And I know moms are, what day is October 1st? Let's check. A Friday, so let's say the moms just dropped off their kids and it's 8 30, and we're going to go with an AM schedule. I'm going to click save, and then right here I have the option to schedule posts. So when I click schedule posts, it's going to go in a post scheduling. I'm going to click schedule posts right here, and I'm going to show you where this bad boy ends up. So right here, you see how it redirected us to a post? I can go these tabs up here. I'm going to click on scheduled and you'll see my post right here. Now I can still make changes to it. Um, I can publish it immediately. I can reschedule it. I can cancel the schedule and I can preview the post. Again, it just says test test. So we wouldn't want to post that today. So I am going to delete the post. Uh, for reference, I'm on a Windows computer using Microsoft Edge. I typically use Chrome. Um, however, uh, I run a lot of marketing extensions on this platform, on this computer. So it would just behoove me to do this in Microsoft Edge. I do hate Microsoft Edge. So that is how we can use content to cross post to, or to schedule posts to um, these platforms. Now, there is an option that is so glitchy, but you know, Facebook's working on it to take a single post and cross post it to both Instagram and Facebook. Um, but we don't have that option set for Corey yet. 
down the road, hopefully they turn on, but it's something to always explore. And with some of our clients, we're able to post the same post to both Instagram and Facebook. So that may be an option for you. It is not an option for Corey's account, and I'm not going to dig into it because I don't want to bore you guys any longer. But again, the benefits of scheduling posts is that you do, you sit down for one or two hours a month or, and just knock it out. Just build out your posting schedule for the rest of the month. That means you just know your social media is working for you. You have your phone on you and if anyone comments on these scheduled posts, yeah, you're there talking to them, but you're not having to work on your business so much. You can sit down one day where you're feeling really creative and sit down with a four formula of the four C's of copy and you kind of really knock that out and repurpose this content and mix it up and work it around and those many photos Corey took in staging we'll use here again zoom in zoom out and you know customer reviews that's what I do I batch schedule content so I don't have to think about it but I know when I sat down what my goal was and everything matched that I really hope this helps you guys I'm excited to see some of you in CookieCon and the ones that I don't know that you will be missed but thank you so much for hanging out with us for way too long um, if you have any interest in learning a little bit more about the cookie college go to thecookiecollege.com and you can learn a lot about what we offer i know some of you are watching this in the cookie college which i find hilarious um, and if any of you guys aren't in the main group it's uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash sugar cookie marketing it's uh, thousands and thousands of really talented people all working to the same goal of growing their business Again, you guys are wonderful. I love you. I hope you have an amazing day. I hope you have an amazing week. And we will hopefully see you soon, either online or in person. Have a great one.